is Bill Quinn. I was born on March 20, 1939 at Sadler, Alberta. I was born on an Indian reservation and I have some experience about the reservation life. I could see the conflicts that exist through the confinement on reservations. We no longer are nomadic people. We can just go out and venture out to any part of any territory. It's uh, hard to digest that as a North American Native Indian, that it's like we completely lost our land. However, those are questionable and debatable, not in a sense of rebelling towards any violence, towards uh, destruction to our land. It's not our culture to be terrorists, to go out and terrorize people. And for those that have been brought up by native elders, you will understand what I'm saying, the philosophy that my grandmother gave me that I've been able to walk with right up till now through the hard experiences that I've had in physical, mental, spiritual, and verbal, and sexual abuse, whatever. I've been victimized by the system from day one as, ever since I've been out of the residential school and going into residential school and getting the confusion that I got and the rejection that I got from the schooling where uh, I believe that I should have been taught constructive uh, education, technology and science to be part of this system today. But something happened, it wasn't meant to be that way I believe because I went to a school where I was taught of a foreign Bible and religion that was handmade and handwritten, created over there to their way of interpreting it, how creation came to be and where we're going when we die and different things like that. It did not exist like that in our world here. In our world there wasn't anyone over there called a devil waiting with a pitchfork to fork you into a, an inferno for eternity. This is the the destruction to the mind that we're all affected from in our world. This is a beautiful world that we live in. There is no punishing God over there to my understanding, to my knowledge, and to my wisdom, to my belief. And that's not saying that I don't have no spiritual values or I don't believe in creation. We are created the way we are. Things are created out there the way that they are. Mystery of creation came from somewhere and nobody on the face of the earth could accurately pinpoint how everything came to be. But whichever way, it leaves us all with spiritual values of good feelings. We know that whether we're black, African, oriental, or uh, white race. We all nurture our babies the same way we're all able to say I love you. But something went wrong here. Something was created over there thousands of years ago to take the destiny of that particular race to where it is now. The supersonic space age that we're in. So there's a lot of issues here that have to be brought up realistically honestly and truthfully in, in the humanistic form because we have that mother tongue now that we're introduced to worldwide English language. I respect the English language and I respect the system. I respect the achievements of the scientific technology that this, this man has been able to achieve. It's evident, it's, it's focused now. He's able to land a vehicle three million miles away on another planet. 
this is how much power he has. But there's something that's gone wrong here. There's an imbalance of extreme wealth and extreme poverty, and I'm coming from the poverty level as an Indian person who's gone through different types of victimization to the level of extreme poverty, to homelessness, homelessness, landlessness, poverty, no job skills, nothing, no education, no jobs, no money. It's, it's hard to walk, the walk of an Indian person that's gone through the experiences of injustice that's not human behavior, not humanistic. And those are the things that we all have to work on. We have to coexist with this system. Alter our bed, we got nothing. This is what I, I'm coming from me. What I have in this North American continent as a native person after going through that schooling that I mentioned and coming out of there with grade five, to live under this system like uh, throwing an animal out of a cage after captivity for many years and throwing them out in the bush. They're going to have a hard time to survive over there. They haven't got those skills of the natural habitat from day one. And this is the same way the school that I have, it's just like turning me loose into a, a jungle. And that is why I say I live in a concrete jungle. The jungle is my, the home is the sidewalk and that asphalt and the cement building that I live in. I'm a human being and I've been affected many different ways. And I know a lot of the people that could have been walking alongside of me stretch miles wide have gone through death, through alcoholism, drug addictions, never, never completed a life cycle. I've been very fortunate myself that I've been able to go through a lot, a lot of tough, rough experiences physically. I OD two times from heroin, and somehow or other I was revived and brought back alive. Three times I was hospitalized, almost beaten to death. I didn't know nothing, and then I'd come to him everything would be swirling around like I was in mid-space. I went through those things. And this is how, this is how I got here. This is why I'm able to talk today because I have experiences of what took place in my life. Those people that have died have a lot of experiences. They were buried with a lot of experiences. There's a lot of us now that are walking on the streets that are going to have to take the stand because we have the experience and the knowledge. We don't have to go through the university and the white world. We already gone through the experience and university of a hectic life and whatever. We're all knowledgeable. And these are the, th the factors that we have to use now to give to our, our fellow natives that are suffering on the street. If we're going to get out of our situation, we are the ones that's going to bring ourselves out. We are going to have to be self, self-supporting to develop our own strategy on how to conquer and combat all these ailments that are hovering over our heads. The continued genocide, whether it's cultural or human death caused by all these drug, uh, drugs that are in our, in our system, the alcohol system because of how fast it's moving. It's totally rejecting the native world in, in, in areas to equality, to walk alongside and be part of the science world. It's gotten so the native. Myself, I use this interpretation all the time. I've been driven to the outer circle of this society. I'm at the edge of a cliff. One more shot and I'll be over. That's how it seems like to me. And I'm watching what's going on here. How their exploitation and the manipulation and all the different types of tactics that are being used to phase out the Indian. And this is a fact. We live 
live under a heavy pressure of discrimination from so many different uh, nationality of immigrants that have been brought here. They're notified ahead of time, some say. Uh, I heard one native lady say that she, her native children went to this oriental school and the little kids told them that the mother was taught over there before they came that Indians were no good, that they were nothing but drunks. You gotta watch them, they're thieves and all this, they'll burn your house down. So this is the stereotype that still continues here that all people have to be involved. We have to wash our hands, all of us as human beings, from discrimination. We have to do that. It, it has nothing to do because you're white, I'm oriental, you're black, African, I'm Indian. I mentioned that, we're exactly the same. And we got to work together and we got to work this system together. We want the system to accept us. Employ us, give us schoolings, give us good jobs. We could work alongside of you. No threat for any more violence worldwide. Let's not have another destruction to this system and we all fall to death again and another system will be restructured. Let's have justice for all mankind here. We could do it. There's a lot of things that we could teach positive to the human brain that this is the way it is. The truth, whatever evolution, whatever we could come to terms and have our debates and thorough discussions of the Bible and the religion conflicts to other cultural uh, breakdowns caused by these forced forced uh, teachings that are from the foreign land, the Bible and the religion. It has a lot of effect. This is where we have a lot of a lot of uh, confusion. We, we are divided because of this and we got to look at it. We should allow each other our own, the culture that we, we have. This is, should have been allowed to us. Our sun dances, our rain dances, our gratitude that we have been able to live decently in, in this part of the world. We use the pipe to communicate with the power of mystery, the power of creation, not an image of a of a man with blonde hair with blue eyes and a blonde beard or all pictures of tall apostles all white or all the attendants of that crucifixion all white not like that we had our own cultural values well intact here i mentioned several thousand years the pipe in our part of the world was the instrument to communicate to this source of power and appreciation. We were able to be grateful that we were in harmony with and close relationship with all life.